Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. Originally released in 2007, the Arcane Ruins kit became a stalwart of many Warhammer Fantasy Battle tables. Many years ago, I owned this kit myself and rather foolishly gave it away as part of a clear out a few years ago. Then a couple of weeks ago, my super kind next door neighbour and host of his own YouTube channel, The KV Forge, please do go and check that out, gave me a wonderful lot of scenery. Much will appear on this channel and this was included brand new, as you can see here, only partly assembled and I'm super excited. So I thought, why not paint it and have a little bit of fun making a short video for the channel. Welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart and in this video I paint the Arcane Ruins. The kit requires very little assembly, a few mould lines removed, a few gaps filled and then a few skulls, of course this Games Workshop, stuck on in relevant places throughout the kit. I found some good filing, got rid of most of the large gaps but also painting a little bit of glue over if you don't already use this, this Tamiya polystyrene cement with the brush is absolutely fantastic. This is the standard stuff, they also do an extra thin but it's so handy just to paint over like this and it just helps fill in those gaps even more. A few more of the extra KLC skulls, glue some tops to the pillars and we are go. I've left them without gluing them to the base so I can do different configurations. You actually get quite a few different pillars, some broken, some not. So you get quite a bit of flexibility about how you use it. And if you are gaming, it could be quite handy to be able to remove things at times as well. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. And after a quick black prime with the rattle can, we are ready to go. And I'll be using an airbrush quite extensively for this build. And I'm using some model colour here. And I wanted to go for a lighter stone look, but also have a bit of a, a sinister greenish tone coming through. So I chose green grey, stone grey and deck tan as my triad of base colours for this paint scheme. Starting with the green grey first, I'm painting in a downward arc on most of these, trying to leave a little bit of the black, showing for some shadow. It's more than a zenithal, but there's definitely elements of that technique to it. But I find if I paint in this direction, it just helps boost those shadows, which makes painting easier. Once that base layer is down, I move on to the stone grey and then I place this slightly inside the lines of the green grey. The idea is you've got your previous colour and that little bit of black showing through, showing so that you've got this kind of gentle transition from dark to light. Exactly the same method on the pillars, going from the top down where the light would be catching the most, leaving some of that green grey showing through with the stone grey filling the areas where the light would hit the most. That technique works on all the different designs of a pillar and whatever the overhang part of that would be. And then we repeat the process again with the deck tan, which is the almost white effect, a very, very light gray with a slight green tint to it. And once it goes through the airbrush, you can really see for at least on camera, it looks like a white paint. I thinned all these paints so they go through the airbrush quite nicely. Sometimes with whiter shades like this, I like to use a little bit of flow improver as well. I didn't feel the need to in this instant. These paints are thinned at least three parts thinner to one part paint, but I didn't really have any issues. And as you can see here, it's going on quite smooth. Working my way around all of the pillars, just like before, leaving the previous two layers showing through so we don't obliterate them and we end up with a nice smooth transition with a focus on the light areas. Now on to some Garagax Sewer uh, contrast paint from Citadel and I've thinned this probably two parts Garagax Sewer to one part water in this instance and I'm just using this to go back into the shadows and this really transforms the piece. So I have the green hint 
showing through on these whitish stone colors but i didn't want the whole thing to look just green i wanted to add some warmth back to it now and this is the perfect way of doing it you could use a sepia type color as well but this caragac so is more of a, a mid brown but once it's thinned and you use it through the airbrush you do have a little bit of warmth in there so some of those darker kind of ochre sepia tones are there with a little brilla brown as well i just find it's a really nice way of shading this kind of color stone so you'll see that I'm focusing around the bottoms of all of the pillars, but also around the edges of the panels where the shadows would be. Continue that process onto the larger double pillars. And once that's all done, I want to seal it with a spray of gloss varnish. Again, this is I'm using the airbrush for. This is to help make sure that when we do the next stage, which is going to be oil paints, that we protect the paintwork and we make it easier to clean up afterwards. You can mix your own oil washes if you want to, but I'm increasingly turning to these ready mix ones. This is from the Soilworks range by Scale Color or Scale 75, and this is Dark Stains. The idea here is to focus on the recesses and allow that oil wash to flow into all the detail, into all the gaps. It doesn't matter if it flows onto the flat surfaces, but it being an oil wash will mean that we can go back and clean it up and play around with it afterwards, as opposed to a standardized wash, where if you don't clean them up fairly quickly, they will stain that surface. Also, by adding the gloss varnish beforehand, it makes it even easier to clean that back to a clean surface afterwards as well. And I'll show you how I do that in the next stage. Right now, we can concentrate on going around and filling all of those crevices and all of those little bits of stone and all of those gaps and things with the oil wash. With the pillars, I'm using a very similar method. Again, going around the edges, allowing the oil wash to work a bit like a pin wash, flowing into all of those gaps and all of those corners and just lining where I've already added the shadow and it just reinforces that, it gives a really, really nice effect. Again, it's exactly the same on all of the different parts of the miniature, regardless of the shape of the pillars. So this is Artist White Spirit. You could also use Sansador, easily found in art supplies places. I think I ordered this from Amazon though. And what this does is just helps you clean off the oil paints. You've protected your miniature already with the gloss varnish. Oil paints take a very long time to fully set and dry, at least 24 hours. You can go back even at that stage and, and clean and tidy them up. But you basically reactivate the, the paint that's now dried to a surface. And you can just, with a clean brush here and a bit of Artist White Spirit, it on there take away any of the oil paint from the areas you don't want it so anywhere there's a little bit of overspill or pooling and you can just clean it away you can use cotton buds or q-tips if you're from the us i believe you call it that and just clean away and, and take the paint back to where you want it to you can also use sponge to buff it out the way it's really really fun to use and, and, and very very easy to get this really nice effect that seems like lots of work but it's actually so much easier than trying to be more precise with a standard wash so sometimes i'm using the edge of my brush just to clean it off the flat areas because i want them to stand out more just work into those areas where it's pulled a little bit and cleaning it away, leaving it in all of those recesses. And when the oil paint dries, it will look dirty and dusty and really, really super matte as well. So that really adds to something like terrain and makes it look weathered and, and dirty and, and old. And like all the other previous stages, we continue the same techniques on all the different styles of pillars. And once those oil paints are dry, leaving them overnight is preferable. We now want to make sure we get rid of any of that remaining shine that's left over from the gloss varnish with a coat of matte varnish. Now for a layer of dry brushing with two thin coats, Trooper White in this case. It's a slightly off-white, that's why I chose this colour. I'm really just trying to pick out the very edges here just to give it a little bit of definition. You want to make sure that your oil paints are fully dry and that your matte varnish is fully dry before you do this, otherwise you can mess it up. But it um, looks like I'm being rough here, but there's hardly any paint on my brush at all. And it just really kind of defines it and, and, and makes it pop a little bit more. Then a final touch, a little splotch of blood where a body may have been sacrificed to the dark gods and dragged off afterwards. And there we are with it all fully dry. You can see how modular it is, easy to move around and place the parts on or leave them off as you wish, as suits the game that you're playing or the scenario and so on and so on. All in all, an incredibly easy piece of terrain to paint. 
But thank you again to Jeff of the KV Forge and next door for sorting me out and, and passing this miniature on to me. It's something I, like I said earlier, really regretted getting rid of. And I'm really looking to build my catalogue of terrain for games of Warhammer the Old World and I'm, I'm starting to do that very much with the help of Jeff next door so it's absolutely fantastic do go and check out the KV Forge channel I'll pop a link in the video description below go and give him a sub if you like watching terrain videos like this you will definitely love what he has on his channel let me know what you think in the comments. I think this has come out really nicely for a very, very simple paint job, and I'm looking forward to getting it on the table in a future game. If you've enjoyed the video, please do consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And if you are new to the channel, do check out the other videos. If you like Warhammer stuff, there's an awful lot of it on there. But if other things that take your fancy as well, there's lots of other games covered and a lot of painting tutorials. The channel has a really friendly Discord where you can talk about anything related to wargaming, be that painting or gaming or just hobby adjacent stuff. Any war game is fair game. And if you'd like to join that, there's also a link in the video description for that as well. For those of you looking to support the channel further, I do also have a Patreon. There's a link also in the video description. You can have a little look at the different tiers and levels there. And thank you to all my existing patrons for your support. I really do appreciate it as always. But thank you very much. Take care and I'll catch you soon.